Hey guys, I'm doing a real quick follow-up video on the video that I posted last week um, about, um, I was talking a lot about um, our journey leaving Lestadianism and what that kind of had, that, what that whole process looked like for me. I just wanted to do a really short follow-up video because I've had a few questions and some for some clarifications. Okay, there's a few things that I want to say. I am not a female preacher. I never intend to be. I don't think it's biblical. I don't plan to continue doing all these videos unless the Holy Spirit says otherwise, which, to be honest, having this out there has been really uncomfortable for me, for my flesh. I don't particularly enjoy that feeling, but I trust that God is using it for a reason and that he wouldn't have had me say all that stuff um, otherwise. <laughs> so it just, that's, that's that, okay? Um, I'm not apologizing for what I said. I know for some people it's going to come across a certain way. I don't know how to change that. I have such a heart for people. I hate um, feeling like I've hurt people. It's one of my worst things. I... I can be a pretty big people pleaser and it it pains me to hurt people and I don't like seeing people hurt so that's part of why this is very uncomfortable for me to do um but you know Philippians 4:13 I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and this isn't about honestly about one religion or about one branch of religion this is about your heart and my heart and that there is a day coming where we're going to be face to face with our Lord and Savior and have we trusted him with our life. It's really that simple. And I thought that in this follow up video, I'd share a really short story that I left out of the last video. And I think um, it might help clarify some things because I had a few questions and I thought I could maybe just wrap it up by sharing this. So we sold our, our house that we built in the country. I didn't include this in our story. In the last one, we sold our house that we built in the country because we wanted to get out of debt. We just kind of saw the writing on the wall with the direction of the country, and we didn't want to be in massive debt, and we wanted to um, just have some more free freedom financially, not be living paycheck to paycheck, right? So we sold our house in the country. We thought we were going to have to move away, um, like far away, for like religious freedom reasons, more that we were just afraid to have to face up with people that we knew and loved from our community. Um, but, you know, that's not the way God wanted it to be because he made it so that we would move literally half a mile away from where we were, which is pretty cool. It just wasn't what we were trying for, but it just happened, right? One of those things. And we were, we had somebody frame up our house. Um, this is when we get into the story, okay? We had somebody frame up our house and um, we're standing in our house, my husband and I, and just looking up in the rafters and we're like, oh, this is amazing. This is so cool. Wow, you know, this is just exciting, like a new stage in our life. It kind of felt like a new beginning, right? And um, I, my husband and I get out of there. We're, I, I pack up all the kids. The kids were all there. They weren't in the house with us, but they were all kind of running around the yard and stuff. And um, I pack them all up in the Suburban to leave and I'm kind of like, I was backing out of the driveway so I was facing the house and I saw it go crumble to the ground. It was one of those moments where your, your heart stops, your breath stops, you don't, we didn't know if anybody, I knew me and the kids were okay and I was pretty sure my husband wasn't by there. Um, because I had the kids in the car with me, but I didn't know if the workers were okay. I didn't know they had just been up on the roof literally a minute before it went down and they were still coming down off of the lifts and off the scaffolding and stuff. And God spared every life. It was amazing. It was really like... Also, it was a wake-up call for my husband and I. My goal is to do this video without getting emotional. Apparently, I'm not capable of that. It was a wake-up call for my husband and I because I don't know if it was maybe like a month or a couple weeks later. Of course, I kind of ha kept having this flash in my, in my eyes and 
you know, of our house literally falling down, it's like, whoa, like, you know, I, I can be a deep thinker, and I was like, hmm, like, I think everything happens for a reason. Um, there's no coincidences in this life. And my husband and I, you know, was still in our marriage was not exactly on the same page yet. And we just had this like moment where I, um, we were reading in the Bible and we got to, I think it's in Luke, where it says, the builders have rejected the cornerstone. And I thought, the builders, I don't mean the builders who are building our house. I mean us, like. This is the foundation, like this is kind of the physical representation of our home. But home is so much more than a building. Home is your family, your children, you know, what you build your life on, what you build your faith on. Um, what were we building it on? Like, were we building it on the rock or were we building it on sand? And if Jesus is your cornerstone, bad things can happen to you and your house will still stand, right? And I feel like God was like, knock, 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 knock. Like, who are you putting on your cornerstone of your family, of your life, of your faith? Are you going to allow me to build your faith? Or are you going to try to do it in your own power and in your own strength and in your own ideas, um, in your own direction, in your own wisdom? And it was really eye-opening. Um, I just wanted to read you guys this. Because I just want to let you guys know, like, it's not even about the church. Like, I know that was a big part of my story, but it's not even about that. It's about so much more than that. Um, the church, meaning, like, the FALC, where I came from. Um, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The wisdom and the words quoted, they appear... In Psalm 118, they appear in Matthew 21, Mark 12, Luke 20, Acts 4, and 1 Peter 2, 7. It's one of the New Testament's most repeated phrases um, for a reason. Um, and it's a prophecy in Psalms. The stone which the builders refused has become the headstone of the corner. 1 Peter 2, 6-8. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. And then in Luke, um, Jesus is addressing the prophecies, and he's or the, not the prophecies, the Pharisees, and he's saying, The builders have rejected the cornerstone. The religious leaders of the time rejected Jesus. And so, I guess my question to you is not what building you attend or, you know, what traditions you uphold or maybe don't uphold is what is your cornerstone? Who is your faith built on? And then once you have trusted Jesus to be your cornerstone, once you trust him to be the director of your faith, you know, are you going to allow him to move? Just... To, to truly imagine Romans 8, 11, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will raise you from the dead if you put your faith in him. So, you mean I'm no longer a poor, like I'm no longer a victim to my sin? The, his Holy, the spirit of God, Holy Spirit, that raised Jesus from the dead will raise anyone who believes in his name from the dead. But not only that, that, Spirit lives in you now while you're still alive. It's not about being this perfect, self-righteous person. No, it's about trusting in His Holy Spirit. It's living inside of you. It's active. It's amazing. And it's, it's active the moment you accept Christ. It's not something you have to work at or try to be good at. Or, you know, maybe if I'm like a good Christian and I like go to church a lot and I do all the things, check, 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 I will be... Um, you know, I'll have more of the Holy Spirit. That's not, he, it's a free gift. A free gift, I think it's in Ephesians. Grace is a free gift given to man so that no one may boast of his own works so that we can boast only in Christ, the Son. He's the only one who can claim any credit 
for our faith. And he is the only thing that we need to build our house on, our faith on. And he will actually build our faith. We don't have to do it ourselves. See, it's such a difference, you guys. It's it's amazing. Um, I just wanted I just wanted to clarify, and I also want to say that I wasn't trying to say there's no saved people in specific religions. I have no idea who's trusted the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to be their own personal Savior. That's not my responsibility to tell you that. I can tell you how how it was for me, how I had these lenses on when it came to forgiveness. I had these lenses on when it came to Jesus and what he was capable of doing. I had a lens on when it came to the power of the Holy Spirit and and how He, the Holy Spirit goes wherever it wants to go. I have no control over God's Spirit. It, it goes where it wants. Um, like John, or like Jesus was telling the Pharisees, it, you know, the Holy Spirit is telling Nicodemus, the Holy Spirit goes where it goes. And you don't see it. You don't know where it goes because you don't control the Holy Spirit. He does. So, anyways, I wasn't planning on doing a follow-up video. I just want you guys to know um, my heart is not to hurt you. Um, my heart is to help you. And I, I'm just a person. I'm obviously not perfect i don't have all the answers so if you think i do please don't come to me and expect me to know everything because i don't um go to the bible and ask jesus to be your lord and savior and he will give you his spirit and he will help you and you don't have to figure it out on your own so that's my message today i hope you have a great day i like i said i don't want to keep toying these so bye <laughs> Uh, okay, we'll see you guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Love ya.